Mr. Comer here, and I'd like to welcome you to the Cell Structure and Function Green Sheet presentation. Um, by now, you should have a pretty good idea about what cells are, um, what some of the major functions of the organelles are, what they kind of look like, and certainly have an idea of, about the cell theory. Um, if you don't, uh, this is kind of a last chance for this presentation to kind of wrap, wrap up your learning on this. So um, cells are the basic units of life. They um, are the functional part of living things as well as the structural part of living things. And you should also know that um, all life comes from life. In other words, um, new cells arise from previous existing cells. That's the cell theory in a nutshell. Um, cells are made up of these things called organelles or organelles. Um, and these are tiny little structures inside the cell that carry out each of our life functions. Um, you should also be aware that certain organelles are located only in plant cells and some organelles are located only in animal cells. And there are other types of cells um, that don't have that many organelles at all. For example, you should be aware of the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. In a prokaryotic cells, um, these are cells that are bacteria. Um, they do not contain a nucleus, so their DNA is just kind of floating around inside the cytoplasm. In eukaryotic cells, um, plant and animal cells like us, um, these are cells that contain a nucleus. And the way that I like to remember this is that um, when I think of prokaryotic, I think of nokaryotic, meaning they do not carry a nucleus. And when I think of eukaryotic, I think you carry a nucleus. Am I right? All right. Um, the first organelle that you need to uh, be familiar with is the cell membrane. Um, this is the part of the cell that really is what makes it a cell. It's the part that surrounds the cell. Um, it regulates transport, meaning it's selectively permeable. It's going to determine what types of things um, enter and exit the cell. And we'll learn a little bit down the road that uh, the cell membrane also functions as a way for cells to communicate with each other. But um, certainly we're going to be going into a lot about this idea of selective permeability. And we talked a little bit about size. We said that small things um, can very easily pass through the cell membrane, whereas big things, um, like our friend starch, uh, need to be digested before they can pass through the cell membrane. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. All right. The cytoplasm. Um, the only thing you need to know about cytoplasm is that it's the watery substance that's inside the cell. So um, sometimes it's referred to as a jelly-like substance. And another way to remember it is it's everything inside the cell membrane um, that's between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Um, so you can see that it's um, this stuff right in here, all of this fluid that makes up the inside of the cell. All right, next one. Uh, the nucleus. All right, so the nucleus is super important. Um, it's pretty much what I like to consider um, the brain of the cell, all right? So um, it controls all of the cell's functions, um, basically because it contains DNA, usually wound in the form of um, DNA known as chromatin and it regulates all cellular activity. The brain of the cell, nucleus, super important. All right, uh, the next one is the mitochondria or the mighty mitochondria. Um, and this is the powerhouse of the cell. So when we think uh, powerhouse, we're talking about the part of the cell that accomplishes cellular respiration, or in other words, makes energy, all right? So um, this is the part of the cell that's going to take um, the sugar that we eat and the air that we breathe, and it's going to turn it into energy. And as a result, every time we do a good thing, we get two bad things, and the waste products um, of this reaction are carbon dioxide and water. So the mighty mitochondria is going to be the place where energy is made in the cell, and we should definitely remember the word cellular respiration. Next, uh, the ribosome. Can't have a cell without a ribosome. So we talked this week a little bit about how the cells are tiny little protein factories and how they work together in a system to create proteins. Well, ribosomes are like the little workers. They're the site of protein synthesis 
and this is where we build proteins from amino acid. Now let's remember, proteins are chemicals, very big, large, complex chemicals um, that carry out all the life functions, and their smaller little subunits are known as amino acids. So I like to remember AARP, and this stands for amino acids, ribosomes, proteins. If you can marry these words in your head together, you will be successful. You know everything you need to know about the ribosomes. Good on that. Moving on. Uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, that funny uh, shaped thing that's usually found near the nucleus, um, these are a bunch of membrane, membranes that transport materials away from the uh, nucleus and throughout the cell. Um, they generally have their rough appearance because they are speckled with tiny little uh, ribosomes on them, and it's usually the site where proteins are built. Now, ribosomes can be found free-floating around in the cytoplasm, um, but they're also found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth variety of endoplasmic reticulum, we don't really need to know too much about. It's in charge of making fats and oils and waxes and other lipids. Um, but for now, we should know that the endoplasmic reticulum um, transports materials throughout the cell. So that word transport is going to be really important. All right, so the Golgi apparatus or complex or Golgi bodies is that thing in the cell that looks a little like the endoplasmic reticulum, but it's usually found a little bit closer to the cell membrane. And this is what packages the protein for secretion. Secretion means to be released from the cell. And remember we said proteins are really big and complex. Well, when we have a big complex protein that's really hard, um, it's really hard to get it outside the cell membrane. So the big complex protein kind of makes its way through the Golgi apparatus and comes out in a form that's gonna be able to be released through the cell membrane and outside of the cell. So the Golgi apparatus essentially puts the uh, protein in a little box and sends it out of the cell for shipment. All right. Next, vacuoles. Not much to know about vacuoles, but vacuoles are essentially storage. All right. So vacuoles are going to store materials um, for later. Um, one thing to know is that plant cells have a huge central, we call it the central vacuole. And the central vacuole, um, I also sometimes refer to as the pool because it holds water, all right? So um, plants store a lot of water and they do so in their cells and in the central vacuole of their cells, all right? Um, while we're on the subject of plants, we should know that uh, plants have kind of an extra layer of protection surrounding their cell membrane. And um, it's called the cell wall. So it's this tough, um, undigestible cellulose material that surrounds the plant cell. So if we had a plant cell here, and you know it's a plant cell because it's going to be square, here's the uh, little nucleus, here's that big vacuole I was talking about, um, we'll have some chloroplasts that will change later, right? The cell wall would be a second layer around it. So here's the cell wall. And then this would be the membrane. Cool. Cells have, uh, I'm sorry, plant cells have cell walls. All right, last but um, almost least is um, plant cells also have these things called chloroplast. So um, you can see here, um, here's a picture of a plant. And inside its plant, there are these square little cells with all these little um, green things inside. Well, that's because um, the green things are the chloroplasts. They are the site of photosynthesis, where we are going to take the energy from light and we are going to create sugar or food for the plant. In doing so, um, the plant is going to give off oxygen as a waste product. We're gonna talk about this chemically a little bit more later, um, but you should also know that inside the chloroplast um, is a green pigment called chlorophyll, and this is the chemical that physically absorbs um, the sun's energy um, to convert into food. Um, and this energy is used to produce sugar. I'm going to put a period at the end of that sentence. All right. Next, um, this is something we did not see yet in our reading, and I'm glad we're having a chance to do it, um, is that cells, uh, as being the basic unit of structure and function, 
kind of organize themselves in multicellular organisms, and this comes up time and time again. So um, a single cell is really interesting with all of its organelles, um, but when we put a bunch of similar cells together, um, they form what's called a tissue. All right, so a group of cells working together forms a tissue. So you could have one muscle cell, but then a group of muscle cells makes up your muscle tissue. All right. Well, um, when you have a group of tissues all working together to accomplish a function, um, we call that an organ. So a group of muscle, muscle tissues can be also found in the heart. The heart is made up of muscle tissues, as well as a bunch of other tissues um, that surround the heart, um, that operate within the heart. And that organ, the heart, is part of the organ system known as the circulatory system. And all of the circulatory system, all of the systems, including the circulatory system, um, makes up part of the body, which is the organism. So we're really big in the living environment about trying to understand um, the complexity of life in terms of um, smallest to uh, largest. So we could even add, at the beginning of this, we could even add that word that we learned at the beginning, right? Organelles are inside cells. And then cells make up tissues, and tissues make up organs, organs make up systems, and systems make up organisms. All right. So uh, with that being said, uh, that's the entirety of the green sheet presentation. Um, the last thing you need to do on your green sheet is essentially um, label the diagram that's down there. Um, so this would be a good time to kind of hit pause and make sure that you're able to use these two uh, pictures um, to label the rest of your green sheet. Um, and that's about it. We can hit the music. Yeah.